Hello! So today we are at Helsinki in Finland in the Cessna Citation CJ4 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Haven't flown this for a very long time so I'm going to be very rusty but the, really the focus isn't on the aeroplane today. I just wanted something fairly small and fast to get us between two different airfields. So we've got the Orbex rendering of the um, Helsinki Vanta airfield which has been made by MK Simulations as far as I'm aware. And then we've also got Turku that we're flying to. So if we go and have a look, so here's Helsinki on the Orbex page. It's very reasonably priced and it's really nicely modelled. We'll have a nose around it as we taxi out to the runway. And then MM Simulations got in touch with me with this, this week and gave me some of their scenery to look at and to potentially record some videos with, which I'm obviously doing so. And one of the airfields they make is Turku in Finland, and it's a really nice rend rendition of it. So the reason for doing this route between Helsinki and Turku is because I've actually done it in the real world. So many years ago, myself and my dad flew to Finland and we yeah we we flew into Helsinki and then got a dash over to Turku. Um, obviously the dash isn't out for flight simulator so I thought what could I use instead and I thought oh I know I haven't flown the CJ4 for ages so let's go and get it ready for flight shall we. So it's a bit of a trip down memory lane with this aeroplane it's been so long since I've been in it. Okay so I've got to try and remember where everything is now, so this is going to be fun and games. So batteries come on first, and that powers up obviously some of the avionics immediately. So we don't need emergency lights on, we can just go and turn on the beacon light to warn people on the outside we're about to start the aircraft up. And we can turn on the nav lights as well while we're at it. And then we just uncover the two starter switches and we can start the engines. We're not going to be bothering with pushback or anything clever like that. And then we can go start the two engines and they should just come up fully automatically. So you can see... It is, it is warning us about the emergency lights not being armed, so we will go and arm them just to get rid of the warning off of the EFIS display here. So it's warning about the pito heat not being on, so we'll go and do that. Normally you wouldn't do that until the runway, I wouldn't have thought, but there we go. So engines are up and running, so avionics can come on. Wait for everything to boot up. And then we'll go and program our flight while we are sat here on the ground, not doing much. I'm presuming this will come up in a little moment. Oh no, we've got a separate control for it, so the standby flight display has a separate switch. See, I told you I was rusty with this aeroplane. Okay, let's go and go to position initialization. Pick up the... yeah, here we go, set position. So the airport we are at is Helsinki, which is Echo Foxtrot Hotel Kilo. Echo Foxtrot Hotel Kilo. So we'll drop that in on the airport. Oh, we can't do that in this aeroplane. Okay, it's not fully modelled. So we just go to flight plan and we drop that into origin. And then destination, we go to Echo Foxtrot Tango Uniform. Echo Foxtrot Tango Uniform and drop that into destination. 81 miles end to end, which is great. Uh, we're not going to do any alternates or anything clever like that, so we'll execute the change. We'll go to performance initialization. We're going to fly to 12,000 feet today. And we'll execute that. And then we'll go to the. We're not going to have any passengers or cargo. The weights are already calculated for us, so we're going to take off. Um, outside air temperature, where's the easiest way to steal that from? Is it on any of the other screens, or do we have to go look it up? Just reading around. So 27 degrees will do. It's, it's a warm day. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. We can leave everything else alone there. So next page the V-speeds, does it pre-calculate? No, it's not really 
it's not a fully configured system really so we're not going to worry too much although it may not be doing that because we haven't got departure arrival set up yet so we're going to be taking off runway 22 right and we are going to be doing the now let me get this right ADIV 3 November standard instrument departure so we'll execute that then we'll go back to departure arrivals go back to arrivals and we're gonna we're gonna come in on the ILS runway 26 and we're going to be doing the X up 3C standard approach route execute that so let's go and have a look now if we go back to the directory where's the performance data there it is so performance initialization that's all fine takeoff was there so it didn't give us the v-speeds did it oh it's, it's calculated them now now we've put the wrong way in it's gone so take off flaps it's it's recommended 15 so we'll go and sort that out so flap levers down here so that's 15 degrees flaps uh, in terms of lights now we want the taxi lights on We'll do landing and strobe lights when we get to the runway. Otherwise, I think we're good to go. It's a nice sunny day. This appears to have aligned itself. We have a display down here. I've forgotten a lot about this. So we've got format here, which will change the display. Obviously, we've also got the zoom level. Very cool. It's not showing the flight plan now. Potentially because we've got some discontinuities to deal with. So let's go and have a look. So go next. Yeah, that's why. So then execute that change. Then go get rid of that discontinuity as well. Execute the change. And that should give us... Yeah, we've got the, right, the, the plan now. So let's go format again. There we go. Is working perfectly. Brilliant. Oh, I said trip down memory lane seeing this aeroplane again. So we now need to go and pre-program the um, master control panel for the autopilot. So we're going to go and set the heading to 220 degrees, which is the direction of the runway we'll be departing on. And we'll set our target altitude to 12,000 feet. I'm just watching this number here. And can we pre-select nav mode? So, oh, we're in VOR mode. So we want to change that immediately over to... There we go. Oh, that's VOR. Sorry, that's FMS mode. There we go. So it is working. Interesting. So... Press B to calibrate the altimeter to the current barometric pressure. And we'll pull the zoom back in on this to show it a bit more closely because it's an interesting departure, so it's not easy to fly. Okay. So rather than waste time with uh, push back, we're going to just taxi straight out. So if we move the parking brakes and we're rolling, we'll turn the aeroplane on a sixpence because you can in the CJ4. And we're going to go and be nosy and have a look around the airfield on the way out. because we can, basically. Something I love about this scenery is the ground isn't flat anywhere. There's lumps and bumps and slopes and it's very, very good.
So we're going to taxi out to the Zulu taxiway that goes around the edge of um, the buildings here so we can have a nose at them. So if we just get this going in a fairly straight line, which we appear to have done, what I want to do is go to the drone camera and go and show you inside the building as we're taxiing past. Isn't it cool? So the interior of the the main terminal building is done, and not just that, but both levels of it. So we've got very, very cool modelling. So there's our aeroplane zooming off across the tarmac all on its own. So we'll go and press insert and go back inside and go and take control of it before we get into trouble. Get back onto the, the route we should be going. So this is the Zulu taxiway we're just joining, which travels alongside one of the main runways, 22 right probably, so, but we're going for 22 left, which is around the back. That gives us more opportunity to have a look around. So if we go insert again, so you get to see some of the scale of this airport. So there's several big um, hotels in the middle of the airport. There's a Scandia one, there's a, Ho a Hilton. It's very cool. The Finnair building. There's lots of support buildings around the exterior of the airfield and most of them are for de-icing aircraft. It's like there's a whole tank farm over here and that's all for de-icing aircraft away from the terminals. So you can see the control tower over there, it's like a huge uh, big lump of concrete. Whoa, we just had the problem where, have you ever done that where you hold the right mouse button down and it influences the controls or just had that happen? So we're just coming up to Zulu Delta, hopefully, just hitting the brakes. Yeah, Zulu Delta, you can just see it on the sign there. So we're going to follow this. This becomes Delta after crossing 22 left. So we're going to go straight through the van. And go up towards 22 right. And we're probably going to get fined for taxiing too fast, but I want to get you to the wrong way and it's quite a long way. Yeah, we're texting at 60 knots. Oh, I need to slow down. Look, we're going to hit a bump. <laughs> and the next wheel came up. That's quite amusing. So it just shows you this airfield is so, so bumpy. You really do need to be careful. I'm trying to get us out here, though, without spending 10 minutes taxiing. I really just wanted to highlight the elevation changes across the airfield. It's really interesting. So this is the Helsinki Vanta from Orbex. Okay, so we're just rolling out towards the runway. Here it comes. So it's a kind of on a crown on top of the the hill where the airfield is. You can see that suddenly there's this enormous runway in front of us that's above the elevation level of the airfield of the terminals. Okay, so we'll go full throttle. So the Cessna CJ4 doesn't have auto throttles, so we do have to. It's like a FADEC throttle system, so we do need to be careful with it. Gear up. Already doing 200 knots. So we'll go for nav mode. And we'll go for 
Actually, should we try VNAV, see if it works? So we're already doing 240 knots. Is it going to? I need to engage autopilot, don't I? That would help. And your damper. There we go. So it's turning. We're a little bit late because I suddenly realised I hadn't engaged autopilot. So we're going to come back off the throttle now to stop us exceeding 250 knots. Although I suppose it will turn that into climb rate if it's clever enough. So let's have a look. We're in climb mode on the throttle. Yeah, notice I said it's a bit of a tricky departure. It's quite a steep turn off the climb out. So did we put the... We need to have landing lights on below 10,000 feet, really. And the strobe should be on. Other than that, I think we're good to go now. Gear is up. Flaps are up. Peter heat's on. Okay, so let's go and have a look outside. Go and have a look at... It's quite a big airfield, isn't it? So we obviously took off from this side. We were parked way over there. It's an impressive airport. And now we are on our way. So we can go to standard barometric pressure because we've gone through the transition altitude. It's only 6,000 feet around here. Uh, let's go and increase the range on this so we altitude. can see the rest of our flight plan. It's not a very long flight plan. Exupa sorry, is the beginning of the standard approach route into Turku. So let's open the throttles up a little bit more. Can we go any faster? We can, yeah, take off power. No, we'll just leave it in climb. It's fine. So we are now at 12,000 feet. So the aircraft is accelerating. It's gorgeous weather today. Absolutely fantastic. So we'll manage the descent ourselves rather than letting the aeroplane have all the fun, I think. Uh, so we'll do a flight level change down to... Oh, we're overspeeding. I keep forgetting this hasn't got auto throttles, so let's just pull the throttles back. There we go. So I put it back into cruise mode on the Fadex throttles. Should be quite happy there. Obviously you don't want to be too close to the speed limiter because then you are at risk of um, a gust of wind throwing you and uh, the wind is gusting look today it's jumping around quite a lot so it might be something we need to pay attention of on approach having said that the cj4 is quite easy to fly it's a lot easier than some of the big jets i think some of the, the pmdg boeings if they are heavy can be quite a handful on approach because the margins become very thin um, so yeah, if you don't program your fuel correctly on the big PMDG planes, and the Phoenix as well actually, your kind of min-max speeds on approach become quite difficult. Let's have a look from outside. It's a lovely looking aeroplane, isn't it? Very quick as well. The scenery of this part of the world is really nicely modelled in the sim. If you've not flown around Finland, it's really, really good. It's flat, but it's always very pretty. And the detail on the ground is very good. Okay, so we can see down here. What details do we get in this? I forget what we actually get. So if we go to the index page, there's a progress page, and that gives us how long until, so distance and estimated time on route for each leg, which is really good. 
and you get a fuel burn down as well. Obviously, we've got way more fuel than we need. So let's go and have a look at the approach in Navigraph. So here's the X Super approach. We're just a approaching Adivo at the moment. So we'll be coming along to X Super. So we need to be above 7,000 feet by X Super. So we'll target 7,000 feet for our descent. And then we will target. So it's saying. Yeah, that's for that one, and that's for that one. And we've got its sug above 2200 feet. So we actually, what we'll look at is the ILS itself. So it's, yeah, it's saying 2000 feet here for the feathers, but I'm more inclined to target sort of 2700 feet for its sug. And then we'll fly into the. Um, into the ILS. So it's a good point actually, so let's go and see if this has programmed itself or not. So 109.5, 257 degrees for the ILS, let's go and busy ourselves with that. So navigation radios, tuning, there we go. Nav 1, we want that to be 109.5. Nav 2, we'll do the same. just so we get ILS for the approach. And the course was 257 degrees. So that's going to be up here somewhere. There's course. Of course, it won't do anything. Course doesn't do anything unless you're in VOR mode. So we'll switch over when we're a bit closer to the airfield to um, VOR mode instead of FMS mode. So the screen will go green or the symbology instead of being uh, magenta. How are we doing? So we said on the approach we need to be above 7,000 feet at X Super. So we're at 12,000 feet at the moment. We're just going up to the top of departure. So let's go and target 7,000 feet then. I can't remember if the CJ4 gives you the green banana on the, um, the screen. Let's find out. So if we go flight level change mode and then pull the throttle back. Let's see what happens. Do we get a projection of when we reach the altitude? Really, no. That's a bit of a shame. So we're just coming down to eight thousand feet. Altitude. And we're overspeeding all of a sudden. Because we're below 10,000 feet, we shouldn't be going this fast. So what we'll do is go altitude hold while we sort that out. Spoilers. So we need to stay below 250 knots now. That's fine. Let's just increase the throttles to... So we're at 7,200, which is perfect, to be honest. Come through X Super. I'm recording a video. It's my other half. So we don't overspeed again. 
So we're just waiting to get to X Super. We're just above 7,000 feet, which is what the standard approach route demands. So ITSUG, what does it say about ITSUG? Nothing. So our next target then will be 2,300 basically. You can see we're already picking up signals from the approach. So just about to come through X Super. We've got LNAV switched on still, so the airplane, there we go, flight director's just kicked in, airplane's going right. So we're going to go and target 2300 feet now. Sorry, 2700 I said, didn't I? So there's 2700 set. And we could use speed mode to come down as a nice safe way of doing it without overspeeding the aircraft. So we go flight level change. And when you do a flight level change, you can set the speed to do it at. That's interesting though, isn't it? So FLC. So if we did it at 240 knots, for example, and we pull the throttles back, it will maintain 240 knots by using the descent to do that. Obviously, if we don't want to come down as fast, we just increase throttle. So then we can use the throttle to control vertical speed. Because we can see the glide slope already, look. Yeah. The localizer is still off to the right. So we're just coming down to the transition altitude, so we need to go and sort that out. So we will press B and it puts us on the appropriate. We shortcutted it there. Should we just double check that? So we'll have a look at the information for Turku. So we open the airport, look at the weather, and we've got 1002. Does that come? Agree, 1001, close enough. Let's reduce the range on this. So we're approaching Itzug. We've got a 10 mile range. So if we take that out to 20, we're not very far away. So we can see we're approaching the glide slope. slowing down, which is good. Okay, let's reduce the range on this again. I'm just looking forward to showing you Turku because it's really nicely done. I'm just wondering if we can see it out there already. Not quite. It's out in the mist. Let's have a look on the approach chart so you can see where we are now. Are we on the ILS chart yet? just off the page. Altitude. So we're within a thousand feet of our target altitude now. We should be able to see the airfield fairly soon. Although we're still quite a long way away. Okay, we're about to make the turn. We're still on L now, remember. Dropping quite a long way below the glide slope, but that's absolutely fine. 
because the plane's going to level out at 2700 remember we'll need to in remember to increase throttle otherwise the plane will coast and decelerate and eventually fall out of the sky so we're at 220 knots or just about the wind's gusting a little bit it's affecting our airspeed so if we look out in the mist yeah there's the runway directly in front of us so let's go and engage approach mode autopilot oh no that's the autopilot on off switch not approach mode where's the approach mode button gone approach transfer oh there we go approach autopilot transfer i mean sorry so we put approach mode on just in time otherwise we would have had to descend onto the glide slope ourselves. so let's go and manage speed have we got landing lights on this thing yeah we already had them on because we were below 10,000 feet the majority of the route okay should we go and watch the undercarriage come out it's always good fun isn't it it is a bit windy out there Flaps to first position. So we're looking to lose more speed, get to about 140 knots, and we can extend the flaps further. Well, you can actually see it there, look, flaps 35, so there we go. I'm so rusty with this aeroplane, it's funny. Okay, so let me start in producing throttle to maintain indicated airspeed we are being thrown around so this won't do auto land so i will get to a decision height and take over but it does mean while it's on approach we can just have a, a nice look at the nearby scenery and just see how lovely this is so this is turku from mm simulations but even the scenery around it is such high quality it makes a world of difference it really does so we're getting a bit slow so we're just increasing the throttle gently the planes you, you can see the plane starting to wallow where it's a little bit too slow we also need to be aware that there's a bit of an incline at this end of the runway. So we will have to pitch up a bit more than normal and that could put us into danger of stalling if we're too close to our lowest speed. So I'm going to disengage the autopilot off. So we're in charge now. Just going to follow the ILS. He says as we go far too high but we'll just fall gently towards the runway so we're back on the ILS on the oh, sorry on the, the glide slope we've no dip below the glide slope again this is just rustiness for this aeroplane we're getting slow small corrections just bring it in Can get this disparity, don't you, in flight simulator between the um, the puppy lights and the glide slope? So you can see that kind of convex shape to the runway here. So there we go, we're down. So let's go and have a look around um, the airfield here. So we're gonna have to run long, we didn't quite get stopped in time for the intersection. So it gives us time actually to go and turn some lights back off. So we want taxi lights instead of landing lights. Oh, we, there is another exit here. Can we stop in time? 
we're going to do a bit of an unconventional departure from the runway here. And we're going to go and have a look at this wonderful Turkey scenery from MM Simulations. So at least we get a chance to actually to taxi past it and have a look in on the way by. So let's do this from the outside view so you get a bit nicer view of the buildings. So there's all lots of service buildings along the way. This FedEx building right here. The level of detail is a Fin Navia hangers there. The level of detail is absolutely brilliant. So let's go back in towards the um, terminals over here. So I'm going to disregard the yellow lines for the moment. Straight line it. The control tower. A number of flanks. So we'll come in and park in front of the flanks, yes? Parking bay number four. Okay, so pipe and break on. We'll go and shut our engines down. And we're not going to worry about shutting the aeroplane down correctly today because we're far more interested in having a look around the airfield. So, this is the bespoke scenery for Turku then. And it's really lovely, isn't it? You can see there's a control tower here. The internals of the control tower are modelled. So you can see out across the airfield. It's very, very nicely done. Inside the building here, this really... If I can... Oh, I need to slow down the drone camera. Hang on a second. I haven't got the Xbox controller plugged in today. So that's why it's being a so-and-so. There we go. So this really brings back memories. I, I remember sitting here watching the aeroplanes being de-iced. It's, yeah, it's so much like the real place, it's untrue. Well, obviously it's a digital recreation of it. It's nice to see the people. It's a shame that the shading on them isn't quite as it might be. They're a bit too bright. But yeah, it's really nicely done, isn't it? This guy's playing with his phone. <laughs> Some things never change. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the flight. And the real focus today, though, was on the two airports. So that was Helsinki from Orbex and Turku from MM Simulations. So I urge you, do go and have a look at their uh, scenery this is the first one I've looked at that they've made I will be looking at others in the weeks to come and I'm really super impressed with it so should we go and change the time of day see what the lighting looks like so let's go and move the time forwards into sunset getting long shadows and the lights come on yeah it's really good isn't it Very, very cool. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you again soon.